Now I 
again. Good morning, everybody. Psalm 84, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home. I love that joy, yes. Even the sparrow has found a home, the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who enter your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose heart are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it through the place of springs. The autumn rain cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appear before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. For better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing he does withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed are those who trust in you. Good morning. Welcome to Creedwood Baptist Church. I'm so honored that you're here with us. Thank you for those of you who are joining online and to all those who are weary and need rest, to all those who are lonely and need friends, to all those who sin and need a savior, to all those who are brokenhearted and need compassion this day. Our church, we open wide our doors for you. We're so excited that you're here with us. I especially want to welcome you if you are visiting with us. If you are visiting with us, there should be a card in the pew rack in front of you that says, we're glad you're here. And guess what? We're glad you're here. I'm as cheesy as I could be right there. I love it. All right. Um, at the end of the service, I'll be parked at the back of what we call the pastor's corner on your back left on your way out. And if you would do me a favor, fill that card out and bring it to me, and I'll give you a gift. The best coffee mug you'll ever have, all right? It is. It's the best coffee mug you'll ever have. And, uh, but more importantly, I want a chance just to kind of get to know you and hear your story and, and see what God is doing in your life. Uh, we got a couple of things. Number one is we have, I want a child to welcome Chris and Jody. I didn't quite get to say their last name. Rademacher. Yes, Rademacher. They are love and the outcome together. Uh, and uh, they are here worshiping with us. Really kind of a cool story. Uh, Y'all remember when Samaritan's Purse was here? This is a couple that we helped from Samaritan's Purse, a family that we helped with Samaritan's Purse. They have two little boys who couldn't be here today uh, with them as well. So our church actually bought their boys' clothes after the flood. Uh, so uh, I, I hope you're still wearing it. Well, yeah, um, and, uh, and then from there, I ran into Jody at the farmer's market, uh, and we started talking. She said, hey, if you ever get a chance, I would love to come play with you all. And she said, we'll do it for free. And I said, that sounds really good. Um, <laughs> And so they're here, and it's just such a special time. Now, it's going to be kind of some of their singing their songs and congregational singing along the way, and they're going to bring us through that journey. But y'all welcome them and, and, and let them know how much we appreciate them being here today. That's just, just thank y'all so much. I really do appreciate it. All right. Um, yeah, you can clap. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, we are doing a blood drive this week. Red Cross is going to be in our fellowship hall on Thursday from 3 to 7. So if you want to give blood, please come and do so. Uh, we have a book club Thursday at 10 a.m. in the library. And then I wanted to make sure some of y'all didn't hear this well last week. So Casey Cox is this large young man sitting in the middle right here. He is our youth intern, okay? He's on his second Sunday. And uh, I think he doubled attendance this week. So, all right, uh, way to go. Um, uh, two to four, we're doing it, all right? All right so, uh, Casey, welcome. He's a rising junior at Belmont University. And y'all, he just, he loves the Lord and he wants, so y'all just love him, okay? And Casey, let these people love you. All right, would y'all join me in prayer? Spend a few moments right now in praise and thanksgiving to God. Thank you. 
Today is a Sunday that we have marked as tithe your tithe. And we have asked you to pray about tithing, giving 10% of your yearly offering today. So what I want you all to do, I want you all to pray for the offering received today. Pray that it will go to God's glory. And pray that people's lives will be changed by Christ partially through the offering that you give. Globally, we have some partners around the world. Our heart is in Haiti uh, with our friends, our Creole brothers and sisters down the, down the hall. I know that they're hurting. We have a partnership in Lebanon. They're, they're experiencing a lot of infrastructure problems. And of course, what's happening globally in Afghanistan. Would you all bring those to the Lord? Knowing that God has already gone before us. And that would you pray as our Lord has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Well, I know you probably don't always do actions, but I saw all these kids in the front ready to rock. So I want you to try doing this. Can you try this? I'm gonna throw my hands up, worries down. Can we try that together? I'm gonna throw my hands up, worries down. Oh, you all did it. Way to go. Okay, we're ready. If it was all about religion, what to do, what to say, what to wear on a Sunday, all about perfection, Black and white, wrong or right, never gray, I never make it. Mm -mm. Cause I never be good enough. I try to walk the line, pray that I find something that I knew was real. Begin to realize the harder I try, the colder I start to feel until the moment. Okay, let's see those hands. Everybody ready? So I'm gonna throw my hands up, worries down. I remember when he showed me how. With my doubt, cause once I was lost, but now I'm found. No strings attached when he saved my soul. Want you to know the God I know. Oh, you gotta know the God I know. He is more than just a rescue. It's where it starts, not where it ends. And let freedom in. More than just a story in the sky, where and why. He's alive in every moment. And now that I know this love, I'm gonna throw my hands up, worries down. I remember when he showed me how to break up with my towel. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. No strings attached when he saved my soul. Once you to know the God I know. Oh, you gotta know the God I know. So I'm gonna throw my hands up, worries down. 
I gotta say, y'all did great on those actions. Front to the back, everyone was in. Y'all, that sounded pretty good for a Canadian, right? That was pretty natural, it's okay? All right, no, you're like, no. Y'all, I'm gonna work on it. This is my handsome husband, Chris. Can you say, hey, Chris? <laughs> I'm Jody. Uh, he does all the laundry, just to be clear. And um, we have two little boys. I think we have a picture of them somewhere. There we go. We just got back from Canada. We actually made it across the border to see family that we hadn't seen in two years. And it was very hard to leave just because family's family, you know? But then we come here and we're with you, with y'all. And we feel like family because we are all kids of Christ, right? We're all together in this. And has there ever been a time we needed to be together more than now, right? I'm so grateful that we have gotten to know Ray. We're grateful to be here with you. Thanks for receiving us as we are in our mint green and um, black. You look good, babe. Ooh. We're so thrilled. This is kind of like a date. We left the kids at home, so just bear with us. And uh, why don't we stand and just bring who you are, where you are, to the Lord in praise. Don't fake it till you make it. That's not what church is for. I couldn't be here if that's what it was all about. So let's just be where we are, who we are, and bring it to the Lord. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, he's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last. Sing it out. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, he's free indeed. I'm a child. No. 
God, we feel your presence here, Holy Spirit. We feel your arms around us this morning. And you know, you don't do shame. That is not a language that you speak. You speak love. You are love. And if we've thought you are anything else, would you just remind us right now in this moment that there's nothing you wouldn't do to be close to us. You love us no matter what we've done where we've come from, you love us, you love us, you love us. That's it, that's who you are. Maybe we've felt forgotten, lost, far away, overcome, weary, worried, anxious. When you come, your love, (laughs) it displaces those things but your love also makes space for us to feel all of those things. Your love is enough. Your love has space for grief. God, you are good and we can feel sad. Two things can be true at the same time. You love us, you care for us, you know our deepest longings and hurts, and you love us. Thank you that we can worship you in spirit and in truth this morning. In your name, amen. Good morning. As I look around, I see a lot of people whose story is likely similar to mine. I was raised in a Christian home. My parents taught me to tithe when I was very, very young. They started out by giving me a dollar a week allowance. Because tithe literally means a tenth, I learned that if I wanted to be a tither, I would bring a dime to church, and I did. Not only was I raised in a Christian home, but I was raised here at Crevewood. I learned in children's Sunday school that tithing is an act of Christian obedience. The dime I brought to church was the first dime from that dollar. It wasn't the dime that hopefully was left over after going to Haley's Market on Trousdale for an icy. Leviticus 2730 says, a tenth of the produce of the land, whether grain or fruit, is the Lord's and is holy. Proverbs 39 says, honor the Lord with your wealth with the first fruits of all your crops. When I taught children's Bible drill here at Crevewood, everyone who went through that program learned Malachi 3.10. And I see a few of you who know it, and if you want to say it with me, feel free. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough for it. The following thought I want to share with you, I believe so deeply that I can't live life any other way. I believe that everything, and I mean everything I have, was given to me by God. So when I tithe, I am not giving my money. I am giving back a small portion 
of what is already his. God generously allows me to keep the remaining 90% for household needs, for wants, for savings. While I was preparing these remarks, I stumbled upon Dave Ramsey's website, and he wrote a blog post about tithing. I'd like to share a couple of pieces with you. This is Dave's voice. The Bible tells us that tithing is a way to show that we trust God with our lives and our finances. Tithing isn't for God's benefit. He doesn't need our money. Instead, tithing is meant for our benefit because sacrificing a portion of our income reminds us to rely on God to meet our needs. Plus, it makes us more aware of the needs of others, too. In fact, supporting the needs of pastors and the work of the local church is one of the main purposes of tithing. Tithing helps your local church actively be the church by helping others. Encour giving encourages a grateful and generous spirit and can help steer us away from being greedy or loving money too much. Bottom line, you should be giving in some way, but tithing is more of a spiritual topic than a financial one. It's not about the money, it's about the heart. It's about living with the attitude that we've been blessed to be a blessing. JB and I discussed Pastor Ray's invitation to tithe a tithe this morning to give one-tenth of our total annual tithe. And we decided to accept that invitation, and we are doing it as an act of faith because we know that God will continue to meet our needs. Thank you. It's really amazing um, to be in a place where you were our first phone call. One of our very first phone calls, Ray called, and he was like, I heard your house flooded, and I want to know what you need. How can we help? And I remember that phone call so clearly because I didn't know what I needed or how you could help. It was so overwhelming. I was just, I didn't know. I kind of, I don't even know what I said. And um, we just really wanted to come to say thank you for helping. Ziggy wore the... Um, the really cool rain jacket and boots that you got him and all the rain that we just had. And he played Flood, so it's all good. Um, I was a bit concerned at first, but I actually hear that play therapy is a really good way to go for kids. That's how they work it out. And so we're all working it out. We're all working it out, right? God tells us to work out our salvation. And I think he says that because as our situation changes, who he is to us is fresh, it's new. It's like God doesn't change, but who he is to us is new. And I've needed the Lord in new ways in this last season. It's been six months and nothing has changed on our house. I wish I was here to say it's all neat and tidy and put back together. Um, it's a lot more fun giving testimony when you can have a tidy bow at the end to tie it and be like, look at what happened, praise the Lord. But I'm praising the Lord in the middle. It's gonna, it's gonna be okay, it is okay but our house is literally just down to the studs and we're waiting and waiting on permits and stuff to put it together. And you know, when we wrote this song, we were two crazy Canadians living in a Jetta. We'd sold everything we owned because we were that crazy. And we knew that we'd heard the Lord call us out. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, we prayed, on earth as it is in heaven. That was literally what we took seriously. We were like, God, what does it look like for Jody and Chris, two crazy young married Canadians to bring your kingdom on earth. How can we contribute to that? And he's like, your songs. So we toured those Canadian highways, pretty much broken homeless. And now here we are eight years later, not completely broke, but homeless. And this is how life goes. Anybody who has told you that if your life is hard, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it right. You're doing it right. Because as long as he's in the center of it all, you're doing it right. Remember when hope is lost and faith is shaken. Remember when you wonder if you're gonna make it. There's a hand stretched out through your deepest doubt. We can't pretend to see the ending or what's coming up ahead. We don't know the story of tomorrow, but we can stay close to the one who knows. We can trust our God. He knows. 
knows what he's doing, though it might hurt now. We won't be ruined. Might seem there's an ocean in between, but he's holding on to you and me. He's never gonna leave. He is with us, he is with us. Always, always. There is purpose, there is meaning in everything. We surrender to his leading. He wants nothing more than to have us close. We can trust our God. He knows what he's doing, though it might hurt now. We won't be ruined. Might seem there's an ocean in between. But he's holding on to you and me. He's never gonna leave. Cause he is with us, he is with us. Always, always. He is with us, he is with us. Always. Our faith is sealed. Our hope is real. Come one day, we're not afraid. Trust our God always. He is with us. He is with us always. Always. He is with us. He is with us always. Always. He is with us. He is with us always. Always. He is with us. He is with us always. Praise God. Hmm. Well, um, I think we have one more to play. Is that okay with you? We're taking up a lot of time. Okay, all right. Um, well, you know, I remember the day we wrote this song. I was um, on tour with Chris, and we decided, let's bring our kids along. It's going to be great. We're going to parent in public. We don't know what we're doing. It's going to be perfect. And so the first day of our tour with Mandisa and Danny Goki, there's like a couple thousand people. We're backstage. Ziggy, um, my youngest, who turns four next week, was, um, I think, four weeks, six weeks, right in that range. And Milo's 18 months older. And we're backstage, and I had this cool sequin outfit picked out, and I was like, yeah, I got this. I'm super mom. And they're announcing our name. They're like, up next, this Canadian couple loving the outcome. And I have 20 seconds. I'm literally in the, whatever I slept in the night before, I'm nursing Ziggy, and I'm bawling my head off. Anybody else ever feel like a total mess? Like you're just like, I can't do this. And you know what? That's the best prayer you can pray, I've realized. I'm like, God, you got this? Because I don't. And I was, I yelled it. I said this very quiet just now. I yelled it on the top of my lungs and ran on stage in my own merch because it was the only thing that was clean. And uh, that's what this song is all about. <laughs> Have you ever had one of those days? When nothing really goes your way Then you see it wasn't meant to You get a new view Yeah, yeah Everybody has sleepless nights Lost in the worry Will it work out alright Feels like I'm going crazy Stressed out praying Yeah, yeah I know it's not a lot, no it's not a lot But I give you all I got Give me all I got Cause I know it's true God, I can count on you I don't know the way But you got this Give me the faith That you got this Give me today You got this I know that I know God, I know that you got this Caught up in the same mistakes you catch my fall when I fall on my face Learning slowly, God, you show me Yeah, yeah There's a better way, there's a better way So I give you 
ever think of you ever think cause I know it's true God I can count on you I don't know the way but you got this give me the faith that you got this even today you got this I know that I know God I know that you got this yeah you got this give me the faith that you got this even today you got this If you have a Bible, I invite you to turn to the book of Philippians today, Philippians chapter 4. Would you all say thank you again to Jody and Chris? That was just, thank you so much. Uh, the message our church needed to hear today. We're in Philippians chapter 4. Eventually we'll start in verse 10. Uh, we've been in a series called Belong. Uh, we've been in a series called Belong. And one of the things we talked about a couple weeks ago when we had our big building dedication is that we want people to be at home here. We want people when they walk into this place to take a breath of fresh air. We want people when they come to this place that all their joys and all their sorrows can, are welcome here in this place because we're living life together under Jesus. Home is the place where you belong, and we believe that you belong with God, that you belong with Jesus. And last week we talked about, what is church actually? Well, church is an alternative community of love. That's what we are. We are an alternative community of love. We are formed by Christ's love and empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so here's what happens. This world is broken and fractured. This world can be violent and abusive, but the church, the church is this alternative community of love that produces people who live lives of love, joy, peace, patience. You want to finish it out for me? Goodness, faithfulness, and Self-control, it's not a coconut, right? Any, nobody knows that song, okay. Um, today we're going to talk about the generous community. We're a generous community. Why? Yes, we're talking about money today, I, I get that, but we're talking about so much more. We're a generous community because we serve a generous God. See, in heaven, heaven gave all it could give in Jesus Christ. It gave its richest treasure. It opened up its gates. It sent all it could send in Jesus Christ to earth. And Jesus, what did he do when he got to earth? He what? He gave himself up. He gave himself up on the cross. The, earlier in this letter in Philippians, Paul said that he literally, he emptied himself out. Why did he empty himself out? For you. Because he loves you. He did it for the forgiveness of our sins. And on the third day, God rose him from the grave. And we can have life when we put our faith and our trust in him. God calls this grace. God calls this grace. This is good news, y'all. 
This is good news. This is the gospel. So then, so then you are filled with grace. You're filled with God's grace when you put your faith in Jesus. You're filled with God's grace. But here's the thing. Grace is not to be kept to yourself. It's the flow out of you. Okay? It's the flow out of you. And here's what happens. When people who have been graced, they naturally come together to form this alternative community of love formed by Christ's love, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And here's what they're going to start doing. They're going to pool their money together in what we call a gospel partnership. A gospel partnership. And the natural result of gospel partnership is generosity. Actually, I go one step further. The natural result of gospel partnership is joyful generosity. It's a joy. It becomes a joy to give. It becomes a joy to give out grace. It becomes a joy to share in our resources together. Why? It becomes a cycle. God, who is generous, graces us with Jesus. Jesus gives of himself. We receive Jesus and we give that back out to the world. And the whole cycle starts again. And again, and again. The natural result of gospel partnership is joyful generosity. We see this with, in Paul's life, actually. And we see it here in the scripture in Philippians. So we're in Philippians 4. Philippians 4, we're going to start in verse 10. Paul writes this, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content in whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in scarcity, and I know what it is to have abundance. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether in abundance or in scarcity. I could do all this through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to, and my Bible translated as share. Does y'all share? Okay. So this is that fun word again that we learned last week, koinonia. All right. Uh, partner to fellowship with me in my troubles. We'll talk about that in just a second. Moreover, as you Philippians know in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out for Macedonia, not one church shared with me, koinonia with me, in the matter of giving and receiving, except you. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desired your gifts, but what I desire is that more be credited to your account. I have received full payment have more than enough. I'm amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, their fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus, to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. To you join me in prayer? Our God, open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, open our hearts to receive a word from you. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and redeemer. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Y'all remember last week, we, we talked about this letter last week when we talked about church being this alternative community of love. And, and one of the things that made this uh, church an alternative community of love, specifically Philippi, this church an alternative community of love, is that they made an act of love towards Paul with a material good. All right, So they sent this guy named Epaphroditus to Paul, who's in jail. I believe in Rome, mostly because it preaches better. Uh, that's funnier than what y'all let on, but okay. Um, he's in jail, so he's, he's 800 miles away, all right? And I talked to y'all, I grew up in southeast Texas, 
And sometimes I would come over from Louisiana on I-10 into southeast Texas. And on I-10, there's this sign that says, El Paso, Texas, 837 miles. So think about this. Epaphroditus walked, traveled Texas to get to Paul. This guy, Epaphroditus, sent from this church, from Philippi, gift to take care of Paul while Paul is in prison. It could have been money. It's probably some food. There's all kinds of things that were given to Paul while he was in prison. This church moved towards Paul. And Paul's writing this letter partially as a thank you. Thank you for taking care of me. Thank you for showing up for me. This message isn't about that, but never underestimate the power of just showing up for somebody's life and just being with them. Paul's in jail. You have to beg in the ancient world for your food. He's probably awaiting trial. He's appealed to Caesar. And these guys showed up for him. Not only showed up for him, but had a material gift for him. And Paul said, you know, he, he kind of goes through this thing. Well, what? I really didn't need it, but thank you. You know, because I've learned the secret. Okay, Paul, thank you for telling us that. But how was, what was the secret? I could do th- all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it's become the slogan for every athlete ever since. But what was the context in? The context is whether it has enough to eat or not enough to eat. The context was being content in the situation he was at. How was he content? I could do all things through Christ. Well, partially of that, that's the work of Christ in his inner being, right? Right? But then in verse 14, if you go to the next verse, partially of that is because he had a church share in his affliction. He had a church koinonia. He had a church that showed up in fellowship. Now, normally that word koinonia is translated fellowship in the scriptures. We don't translate it fellowship right here. Why? Because when we think of fellowships, y'all think of food. And I've told y'all last week, if you want to bring ice cream fellowships back, I'm there for you. And I have a spoon, okay, ready to go in my office for ice cream fellowships. All right. But that's not what Paul's talking about here. He's talking about showing up for one another, not only just with the presence, but with a gift. How did they share in his sufferings? This church formed this gospel partnership. They pooled their money together and they gave generously. And according to Paul, this isn't the first time they've done it. Read verses 15 and 16. Paul was in trouble in a town called Thessalonica. You can read about this in Acts. He was in in trouble in a town called Thessalonica. Guess who showed up with a gift there? The Philippian congregation. In another letter, 2 Corinthians, Paul talks about the Philippian congregation as not having a lot of money, but they are rich in what they give. That's pretty high praise. Now, Paul was trying to raise money from a rich church and saying that, but that's pretty high praise right there. So what did this Philippian church have? This Philippian church had a culture of generosity. That when they saw the needs of the gospel somewhere in this world, that they, when they partnered with Paul, you know what they did? We're going to get together. We're going to show up. We're going to pray. And we're going to use our material resources for this good. And that's why they gave. That's why they gave. It's interesting, I've seen this played out here. We've told this story a few times. So you guys are part of that. What you may not know is at the same time that's going on, about a year ago, when the, or a year and a half ago now, when the pandemic hit, one of the questions we started asking was, who can we serve? 
And so we went to our partner school next door, and we said, who can we serve? He said, I got 14 families. I, I'm not sure if they're going to get food. So I said, okay, I think we can provide that. So we started providing food for 14 families. Then after a few weeks, it became 32 families. Then after a few more weeks of feeding these 32 families, about once every four weeks or so, we'd provide food for about a month. A couple of folks in the church said, hey, can we provide Christmas Okay, let's provide Christmas. Well, that turned into 99 kids or something like that. And then from there, and then from there, we said, okay, we've, we've got this stimulus money. What can we do with this stimulus money? Some of us don't need it. And we said, well, maybe we can expand our food program. The last three times we've sent out food, we've fed 110 families. That's crazy. I tell people this all the time. They said, how big your church? And I tell them, they said, no way. Yes. I was really worried that it comes out of our benevolence fund. I was really worried that we were going to run out of money when we started doing this. Did you know as of June of 30th that we had more money in that account than we started with a year and a half ago? I don't think that that's true now. But um, <laughs> what was that? That was a gospel partnership. And the natural result of gospel partnership Joyful generosity. The natural result of gospel partnership is joyful generosity. I know in here there, there's a lot of y'all who have been to Honduras. You've done the Honduran trip. And you know that when you go to the villages of Honduras, sometimes crowds kind of gather around. Y'all, y'all experienced that just a little bit, yeah? So sometimes when you go, to, uh, I have a, f- a friend at another church that they went down to Honduras and they were building a, a church uh, where they were at in Honduras. And, and my friend who's like me, tools look really nice and feel really manly, but I don't really know what to do with them, okay? And my friend is there on this church, and they, he's supposed to be building his church. He has no idea, but he sees a soccer ball, and a couple kids are gathered around. And he said, hey, do you want to go kick the soccer ball? They ran away. They went and got 10 of their friends. Well, now he's looking around going, I don't know where to go. And so they said, hey, well, there's a little bit of a field by the school. So he picks up the soccer ball and puts it above his head. Now, as he's walking through the village about a half mile to the other school, other kids start joining in and laughing and cheering and saying, we're going to play soccer. By the time they got to the soccer field, half mile down the road, there were over 100 kids. And somehow he figured out how to organize them. They played and all this. But then they got to thinking, Well, this soccer field seems to work. Is there a nice soccer field in this village? They said no. So they had a little bit of extra money from their trip. So they said, well, why don't we build a soccer field? So they built the soccer field next to the church. You know what started happening? All these kids started coming up next to the church and joyfully played soccer. And they they began to get into Bible studies and began to come to know the Lord. It started with joy of a soccer ball. My friend who's a pastor in Arkansas said, you know, if I can do that with a soccer ball, I need to be able to do that with my buildings. How do we create joy in our buildings? Because people are attracted to that. How do we create gospel joy in our buildings, gospel generosity in our buildings? And so they started thinking that way. Y'all, I don't know if you know the type of assets that we have here. Now, it's been a hard year financially for us. I, we all know that. We all know that coming out of COVID, it was going to do that. And we're going to look at things creatively. We'll probably have to think some, some ways of outside the box, which means that people like me have to be trained on how to think outside the box a bit, Right? But y'all, our facilities are amazing. What if we approached our facilities, how do we foster joy within our facilities where people could experience the joy and healing of the Lord? What if we take what we do really well over at the CRC, which is right now a senior size, senior size, unbelievable program over there. What if we take that and we said, you know what would be great? Let's expand on that a little bit. And let, let's, let's have some grief classes because, because there have been 
people dying like crazy and people are grieving and, uh, and need some hope right now? What if we had grief classes over there? And what if, what if, what if we started with Bible studies over there? And what if, what if, what if we did, what if we did some classes on how to be a caretaker of somebody who's sick? What if we make that a hub of our community, especially for people who haven't had the opportunity to have community in a year and a half? And what if, what if we took those resources and we said, let's have a premier after-school program over there? You think people would give to that? I do. I do. Well, if we looked at our, our facilities around here and we said, how do we create joy in these classrooms? Our God's a generous God. I like what Pam said. Nothing that we have here is actually ours. Nothing that you have at your home is actually yours. It all belongs to the Lord. God's given us abundantly and generously. We've been graced. Now it's time to grace everyone else. Find those partnerships. And the natural result of these gospel partnerships, man, joyful generosity. If you have an opportunity today, we've, we've invited you to pray about giving a, a tithe of your tithe for the year. There are tithe boxes in the back. <laughs> uh, as you exit, you could drop off that. Uh, you could give online. You do all that. Maybe you don't have much money to give. That's okay. But maybe you got some time. Maybe you got some prayer. I don't know. But God has given you. God's been generous to you. How will you be generous with the world around you? Let's pray. In a moment, we're going to give you a chance to respond. Well, this has been not an evangelical message, but some of y'all may respond as Jesus is Lord. Some of y'all may need to be baptized. Some of y'all may need to join our church. Others of you, man, the Holy Spirit's working on you today. You're here with a burden, and you need somebody to pray for you. Would, if that's you, would you just look at me? Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our God, I'm so grateful for your generosity to us. I'm so grateful that you gave Jesus with joy. That sorrow and joy and grief and joy can meet together. I'm so grateful that you have blessed us. Help us to find places where we can be a blessing. You've graced us to grace. You've blessed us to bless. Let's respond with joyful generosity today. I pray for my brothers and sisters in here who are burdened, who are weary, who need you, who are just hanging on. I know that you see them. Make them aware of your presence. because Your presence is enough. In Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Anybody needs to respond, I pray you do so as we stand and sing. Let me be 
Can y'all thank Jody and Chris one more time for being here? Yeah. 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 If you're blessed by their ministry, there's some ways at the back. I think y'all will be back there after the service. Uh, There's some ways that y'all can meet them and then uh, support their ministry. Uh, And I hope that you've been blessed today. Tithe boxes are in the back. If you're visiting, I would love to meet you at the pastor's corner on your back left. Let me bless y'all and we'll be dismissed. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his countenance towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.